all right, we kind of threw you into the cold water with the Jupyter Notebooks, but I like to do the bottlenecks first, even before introducing a little more about IPython and Jupyter Notebooks, just to get the right theme for the course going. It's not about Jupyter Notebooks and IPython, it is about HPC. IPython is the interactive Python shell. Python is a scripting language. There was always an interactive shell. They didn't think it was interactive enough, so they added more features to it. For example, every IPython shell um, can do auto-completion, which is very useful. Qt console and the Jupyter Notebooks also are um, rich environments in that they can do more than just Python code. IPython actually was the first. It's run as an alternative to the Python interpreter, and it's actually the engine that's running in the background, even if we use Jupyter Notebooks with a Python kernel. Aside from the auto-completion, you always also get some way to access the documentation here, for example, as a tooltip. IPython goes beyond what Python offers. So in every IPython shell, you can ac execute Python commands, of course. And actually, one of the typical features is that it numbers the input and output um, of each cell. And you can access it later again. Aside from that, there's magic and additional help. If you list all the magic commands, um, and then, well, when you do it later, you'll actually see that they are categorized because it has gotten so big and even offers you a filter. I don't n use all of them, but there are some that are very useful. For example, the time it magic here will use multiple times. Um, the ls is quite useful. cd will do those a little more detailed within this notebook as well. Um, the magic commands are not Python commands, as I said already. They are things that they added to the Python shell that make interacting with the operating system easier or simply make routine things that happen over and over again easier. Timeit, for example, allows you to time Python routines. Let's take this loop, for example. So, okay, there's not much of a loop here. I'm creating a list. This is a list comprehension um, with a single element doing random from a uniform distribution. And you see the result here. It tells me it takes 844 nanoseconds um, with an error of 1.59 nanoseconds. Um, it did seven runs, and it did a million repeats in each run. Time it will automagic, automagically, yes, um, adjust the number of repeats depending on the length that the operation takes. This allows you to time fairly accurately both very short operations, like the one we have here, and also operations like the dot that we did in the previous one. You can also tell it explicitly how many repeats and how many loops it's supposed to do, but by default it will figure it out and it does provide reasonable defaults. We can also see here that NumPy is not always faster. So here we have nanoseconds and here we have microseconds. Qt Console and Jupyter Lab actually, as I just said, allow you a rich environment where you can combine graphics, LaTeX output, text, um, but even in the regular IPython shell, interacting with graphics is easier than what you usually have in Python. So this is clearly not a course about plotting, but plotting is useful. 
And so I give you the minimal introduction that you might need to plotting. And that is basically um, use the matplotlib magic. When you use it with inline, it will try to put the plot within your notebook or within your Qt console. And um, these three commands is usually what I use when I want to plot. By default, it will do some ping or JPEG output, depending on your configuration. But you could also tell it to use PDF or SVG. This is actually not related to IPython. This works um, for the matplot formats. Sorry, this part is IPython. It's actually telling IPython which matplotlib format to use, but there are similar commands within matplotlib that um, this translates to. Matplotlib actually can also do very nice labeling. So here, for example, I used LaTeX. Who has used LaTeX formulas before? Just about everybody. Good. Um, so I basically can type LaTeX, and unfortunately you can't see it here, but you'll be able to see it in the notebook. It gives me these then in um, fractions of pi. IPython also keeps track of your history. So if you type history, um, it will give you all the commands that have been issued in that session. But it's more. You can actually access the last output. So here, for example, this numpy random.random .random was not written to a variable, but just to the output of the cell. Now, if I want to assign it to a variable, I can do that by just a equal underscore. If I use two underscores, I get the previous cell, so one above. If I want to access an arbitrary cell, I can use the output array out of 13. Now, this has advantages and disadvantages, because it does mean that it keeps every output. Now, there are ways to explicitly delete an output, but by default, it will keep every output that you generated in a session. So if you output some very large matrices, for example, that take up a lot of memory, they won't go away. They will not be garbage collected. That is one difference between IPython and Python. To see what you have in your namespace, you can use who. And you see that I have a variable here, but also the matplotlib pyplot that I imported as plt is visible, random, um, some that I didn't really explicitly put in. If I want more information about these variables, I can use whose um, without an e at the end. And it will actually, for each variable, tell me what it is. So if you get lost within your session, um, you can actually get an overview of your variables, the size that they take, how much space they take up in memory, and what type they are. All right. Um, let me briefly go back to the Jupyter Lab because a few things I wanted to simply show You all know already that you can execute a cell by hitting shift return or shift enter um, because you either knew it before or we just told you. So this will just execute a cell. Um, you can also use this little play button here, which will then execute the cell. Or if it's not an executable cell, um, just jump over it. The kernels here. Some of, if you ever see Python 3, there is a kernel in your notebook. This is the place where you can switch it because the Python 3 kernel will not have the modules loaded that we need. Now you see that the um, indicator here switched um, to, gray, to being gray, and this actually gives you the status of the kernel. So in this case, it's idle. It's not doing anything. You can also have it busy or restarting. 
Now, these are notebooks. They are notebooks because you can take notes. Um, for that, you might have to add cells, for example. You could do this via, um, I never use it, that's um, inserts. Hmm? You cannot, you cannot anymore, okay. Um, you can add a cell just by typing, so you see that the cell is marked by typing B for below or A for above. By default, it will generate an executable cell. Executable cells are marked by um, these square brackets because they later become an input and even later an output. If I, however, want to write text in Markdown, I can um, change the type of the cell by typing M and Markdown. So notice that up here, we switched from code to Markdown. Markdown is a simple markup language. Who has used Markdown before? Wow, a lot of you. I still don't understand why they picked Markdown. Um, the formatting for Python um, doc strings is restructured text, which is similar to Markdown but more powerful. So I don't understand why they picked Markdown. But anyway, um, Markdown allows you to have headers in different levels. So you can structure your document. You can easily create lists. You can add links if you want to. You can even add math. And this is just um, regular LaTeX. You can also include images and even more. If you look, want to find the documentation to Markdown, there's actually a link here in the help. Since you can download all the notebooks at the end, we actually recommend that you use that. That you add cells to your own experiments or you put your own notes in so that you understand better what is in there and later have a more useful reference for yourself. All right. We have a few more minutes before lunch and I recommend that you go through the um, introduction to IPython notebook in that time. If you're still working on the bottlenecks notebook, of course, you can do that as well. And we'll be around for questions. <laughs>